Hello everyone, I'm uh, John Pressman and uh, today we are going to talk about pathfinding algorithms because we all need to be able to get around. So before we begin, um, we need to ask ourselves three main questions. What is pathfinding? Why use pathfinding? And of course, how does it work? So what is pathfinding? Essentially, it's the plotting by a computer program of a route between two points. Sometimes it's the shortest, but not necessarily. It depends on what you're looking for, um, and it can be influenced by various factors within the algorithm that you use. But more specifically, pathfinding addresses the problem of finding a good path from the starting point to a goal, avoiding obstacles, enemies, and minimizing costs such as fuel time, distance, equipment, money, etc. So who is this guy? He is Edsger Dijkstra. He's a Dutch theoretical, or was a Dutch theoretical physicist and self-taught computer programmer who made essential contributions to the mathematical logic that underlies computer programs and operating systems. Um, his work includes uh, being a co-designer on the first version of Algol 60, which is a compiler, uh, as well as his solution to the dining quintuple problem, which uh, helps with computer networking and things like that. But today we are talking about uh, Dijkstra because of his shortest path algorithm, which has more or less formed the basis of pathfinding of the pathfinding field. Uh, little fun fact about uh, this shortest path algorithm, he claimed to have designed the algorithm in about 20 minutes while sitting at a sidewalk uh, cafe with his fiance after being too tired from shopping. So why do we use pathfinding? Um, you probably actually all used or experienced pathfinding without even realizing it. Uh, pathfinding has applications in global positioning systems, travel planning, uh, vehicle routing, even arbitrage, believe it or not. Um, but probably for most of you, you've experienced it in video games. Um, not only does it help it, us get from point A to B in the real world, but it helps your enemies, your artificial enemies, try and kill you in the virtual one. But how does it work? Uh, like, how does a computer actually know where to go? Like, it's not like you can show it a map and it's like, ah, this makes sense, because it, it doesn't know how to do that. Magic. Um, there's actually a reason I chose this GIF, because this looks super fancy, but really he just had a ladle on his uh, arm. Uh, the reason I use this is because when you first approach pathfinding, you're like, I, how do you tell a computer where to go? But uh, it's really not terrifically confusing once you understand, understand the underlying mathematical principles. Um, but before we go any further, we need to kind of set the context. Like, what is uh, a pathfinding algorithm like traversing? Kind of gave it away by saying traverse. Typically, we're traversing graphs or grids, um, which grids can be thought of as a graph in and of themselves. Um, graphs are a collection of nodes or points that are connected to each other by edges or lines. We saw this in our uh, data structures lecture earlier this week. Um, edges can have directionality and they can also have weights. So directionality, if you think about like a, a one-way street, which there are plenty of here in New York, um, you're not going to be able to approach or go down that street um, to the other side or intersection from a certain direction. Um, Edges can also have weights, as I said, which um, I like to kind of equate to traffic, for example. Um, a weight of one would imply maybe that there's not much traffic on that road, but six is like the Van Wick uh, at rush hour, which is terrible if you've ever gone to JFK during rush hour. So, um, it's important to make a difference between the visual representation, like what we might see in a video game, 
and like the, the representation that a computer understands, which is the graph. So here we've kind of laid a graph over a map um, of some sort of game. Um, yeah, so now we're going to go over some three key examples of pathfinding. The first is uh, Breath First Church. With uh, Breath First, uh, we use an expanding ring emanating from the start point called the Frontier, um, which is kind of a cue. Uh, we expand the Frontier through a uh, few steps. We pick and remove a location from the Frontier. Now, our, our starting point can be considered the first thing in our Frontier. So we pick the starting point and then kind of immediately remove it from this frontier. We mark the uh, location as visited to avoid revisiting. And we expand the frontier by adding any unvisited neighbors to the current frontier spot that we're on to the frontier. Um, for each unvisited neighbor we add to the frontier, we make sure to include a reference to the current node we are on. This way we can retrace our path once we reach the goal node. Um, so this loop will continue until we either reach the destination node or um, there's no possible way to get there. Um, so we're going to do a quick visualiz visualization here. Uh, this is a neat little tool um, called Pathfinding JS. Uh, there are different uh, pathfinding algorithms you can use. Here we're just going to look at how um, a breadth first search works. You can see how it kind of emanates out there and it found it eventually reached the destination node and retraced the path. Um, you can clear this and create like an obstacle, start the search again, kind of wraps around this obstacle. And you can see that breadth first starting to reach its limits. It, um, it's kind of like going into a room and assessing all of the possible options to get to a certain point. So it's not very quick, but yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, okay. The next one is Dijkstra's algorithm, our guy Dijkstra, also known as the uniform cost algorithm. So. What if, uh, like in a video game, you're going up a hill? That probably requires more effort, and that effort may slow us down. So you maybe don't want to go over the hill. You want to go around it, because you could perhaps run around, the hill, run around the hill and get there quickly. So the most direct route may not necessarily be the fastest. We need some way of taking this additional cost or effort into account. And this is where uh, weighted graphs and Dijkstra's algorithm come into play. Dijkstra's algor algorithm, like breadth-first search, will visit all neighbors from a given node. Initially, the value of each of these neighbor nodes will be unknown unless previously visited from another source. A value is then assigned to each neighbor that is equal to the cost to get to that node. So you can see um, the edges have a number. And when we visit a node, we assign the number that uh, the edge has to that node. Um, yeah, so, uh, OK, yeah. Uh, so if a, if a neighbor node was pre, pre woo, a value is assigned to each neighbor node that is equal to the cost to get to that node, including prior edges. The edge weight plus prior any cost to get to the current node. If a neighbor node was previously assigned a value, but the cost of getting there from the current node is less than its current value, we reassign the value of that current node. Otherwise, the value of the visited node stays the same. Once all of the neighbor nodes have been visited and assigned a value, we navigate to the node with the lowest cost or assigned value, which we can do through a priority queue, which we all know about. Um, we kind of repeat this process until we reach the goal node or uh, can't reach the goal node. Um, once again, we make sure to maintain a reference to the node from which we came so we can retrace our path once we reach the goal. Um, 
So this seems pretty good, right? Uh, we're, we're getting to the goal on a path that we know has the least amount of cost associated with it. Um, but one thing about Dijkstra is that it'll go to, it'll always go to the shortest uh, cost node, which means that uh, it might go in the wrong direction. Um, uh, la, 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 la. So, in other words, uh, we're wasting time processing nodes that might not be in a promising direction. Um, a star fixes this. It incorporates a heuristic to kind of uh, take into account the, the direction of our goal. There are kind of different heuristics to do this, but um, basically uh, it kind of reassigns a value to each of the neighbor nodes and um, helps uh, resort the priority queue so that we find the shortest path faster. Uh, you're not finding a shorter path. The original cost that's associated with the vertex is still the cost of getting to the goal. So instead of uh, 2.01 plus 5 equals 7.01, the the, the cost to get to the goal is still 10. But we know that we can get there faster by going down the, the edge that's labeled 2.01 than going up and around. Um, so we'll do one more quick visualization of kind of A star versus uh, Dijkstra. And you can see how the uh, direction the ability to provide that heuristic for direction speeds things up. So this is Dijkstra. We have an obstacle, and we'll start it. See, it kind of takes it a while to get around there, and it's going way, way, way off to uh, the other side. There's no need for it to process those. So if we look at A star, with uh, you, these are the different heuristics you can choose, but we'll do Euclidean. So look at this path, and you'll see that A star is going to reach the same path, but uh, a lot faster. All right. So that is uh, basically it. That's pathfinding in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. <laughs>